All right, I'm waiting for a ding that I'm not going to get. Greetings, unsubtle souls, and welcome to the correct views. Google is now making sure we are absolutely ding-free as I report for the Media Speaks. Guys, go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the, the work that I do there along with the David Lake, Kyle, and Court. Do me a favor also, friends. Uh, don't kill me for being gone for so long. I had a Wi-Fi issue. The box just literally died, and with my work schedule, it was impossible for me to get another one, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, needless to say, I am back. And I have not brought you a good news show in many, many moons, so I have decided to do so today. Uh, everything on here, in some way, shape, matter, or form, is good news. I figure I've been gone for 10 days, and I usually post three to four times a week. Why not come back with good news? Kit Daniels Infowars, Missouri considers bill that nullifies federal gun control laws. This is one of the reasons that people like me speak into a camera for a few hundred views here and there, maybe a couple, few thousand views a month. I do it because I'm playing a small part in trying to make sure that we get the rights that we were told were given to us by God, our Creator, according to the Constitution. The Missouri, or luck if you're a Darwinist, uh, the Missouri Senate's General Laws Committee is currently considering a bill that would nullify federal firearm laws, which, quote, exceed the scope of federal government authority, quote. Yesterday, uh, the committee began discussing Senate Bill 613, sponsored by State Senator Brian Meads, which is designed to protect the gun laws of Missourians from laws that run contrary to the Second Amendment and bars the state employees and public officers from aiding in the enforcement of such laws. It says, quote, this act declares as invalid all federal laws that infringe on the right to bear arms under the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and Article 1, Section 23 of the Missouri Constitution, and the bill reads, some laws declared invalid under this act include certain taxes, certain registration and tracking laws, thank you, Mr. Snowden, certain prohibitions on the possession of ownership, use, or transfer of a specific type of firearm and confiscation orders. The Act declares that it is the duty of the courts and law enforcement agencies to protect the rights of law-abiding citizens to keep in their arms. Neves told the Associated Press that he was open to fine-tuning the bill to make it more possible. The Missouri legislature began pushing for such a bill after President Obama announced plans last year to enact gun control laws through executive orders. More recently, the Obama administration is encouraging states to openly submit mental health records to the federal government. Of course, a scary proposition, considering that the newest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders the DSM-5, written by Wax, is so broad that almost every form of human behavior could be considered some type of illness. So basically, Missouri is going to step up to that and hit a home run for the Constitution and for liberty-minded people by making sure that the federal government does not trump state laws regarding what is our God-given rights. Again, Darwinism, luck, luck given rights. Um, I, I'm clowning. Yes, I'm Christian. I don't care if you're not. Um, also, I think it's very good to note that states' rights do trump federal law. That is something that the federal government doesn't like to, say, to speak about, but look at the federal's papers. Look at all the things that this government is founded upon, and you'll find that that is actually very true. Onward we go, friends, the Guardian dated the 22nd. The NSA files Snowden says I acted alone and rubbishes Russian spy claims. People have been foolishly saying that Edward Snowden must have been a Russian spy. And that's why he did what he did. It was all for the sake of Russia. You could argue that the, the, uh, what he gave up was more of a help to Brazil, the United States, and Germany than it was to Russia. I mean, obviously, or Russia has interest in this, but if he was working for anybody, Russia would not have been my uh, great guess. It would not have been my final answer. 
Former USA spy agency contractor Edward Snowden said that he acted alone in leaking U.S. government secrets and that suggestions by some politicians that he might have had help from Russia were, quote, absurd, the New Yorker magazine reported on Tuesday. In an interview, the magazine said was conducted by encrypted means from Moscow, Snowden was quoted as saying this Russian spy push is absurd. Snowden said he clearly and unambiguously acted alone, and that is by himself for you top 40 fans, with no help from anyone, much less a government. It won't stick because it's clearly false. And the American people are smarter than politicians I think that they are, the New Yorker quoted Snowden say. The head of the U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee said on Sunday that he was investigating whether Snowden had help from Russia in stealing and revealing U.S. government secrets, of course. I believe there's a reason he ended up in the hands of the loving arms of an FSB agent in Moscow. I don't think it's coincidence. That's because you're a don't, said Representative Don't Mike Rogers, who told NBC's Meet the Press, referring to the Russian agency in that is a successor to the Soviet era KGB. So just because they took him in now, they're in on it. Rogers did not provide specific evidence to back his suggestions of Russian involvement in Snowden activities, but said some of the things we're finding we could call clues that certainly would indicate to me that he had some help. Well, that's proven not to be the case. Snowden fled the United States, we all know that. Originally he went to Hong Kong, and of course they were saying he worked for China. Now, you know, of course he's a James Bond. Um, if you believe that, you're an idiot. In other words, he backed it by himself and on his conscience. Guys, let's not forget, this guy gave up a job that makes a lot of money. And he'll never get to see his family and friends. Did you have a beer with your, you, someone you loved over the holidays? Guess what? Snowden may never do that again with most of the people he ever knew. And you can't tell me that uh, he went back to the loving arms of Russia. There's no, absolutely no proof whatsoever. Timber, uh, for D-Lake, there's absolutely no proof whatsoever that he had any ties to Russia at all. He doesn't know anybody there at all. He doesn't even speak the language. Um, and guys, this is from Elizabeth Orendor. This is more good news on the, the Good News Show. General Mills offers small sacrifice in GMO-free GMO Cheerios. Uh, basically, it was a marketing move. They're not saying that GMOs are bad for you, so maybe this isn't a home run, but it's at least a double. Earlier this month, cereal giant General Mills announced the first finger food of American babies. The company's original Cheerios would be GMO-free, that is to say poison-free. The announcement has was received with resounding applause from food activists and moms alike. But unfortunately, this wasn't the case of a food maker bending under pressure of GMO activism, merely a marketing move. To make the original Cheerios GMO-free, it says, all General Mills had to do was change two relatively small ingredients, cornstarch and sugar beech, beets, both of which were used in small amounts only in the formula to begin with. You see, Cheerios are mostly oats, and oats are not genetically modified. Oh, Wilbur, I already knew that. General Mills simply covered it to move the two GMO cornstarch and cane sugars. Good. Um, again, it's a good idea to avoid sugar if you're trying to get over a cold, but uh, other than that, uh, sugar is much better for you than uh, high fructose corn syrup. It was a small change and a cheap change, but the company will be reaping rewards all the way to the bank. I'm no big fan of Kraft, but they did the same thing with, with uh, some of their mac and cheese I noticed at my uh, local store. A growing number of Americans don't want genetically modified foods. 90% uh, of the people think it's uh, not safe. So basically, Cheerios has uh, joined the light side, if you will, at least on one issue. I want to invite all of my friends, if you're ever in Canton, Ohio, to go to the Arcadia Grill. If you're not from Canton, Ohio, do me a favor. Go to the downtown Arcadia Grill and give them a like just to increase their standing on Facebook. They have absolutely delicious food. 
And I don't just say it because they sponsored the show. I've taken friends there. I've gone there after uh, events due to personal matters. Why? Because our families always love their food. Um, I say get the ravioli because it's delicious. Now, my girlfriend, Christelle, behind the scenes queen, I know, she's really not a real big uh, Red Sauce fan. She always gets chicken fingers, and they're like a chicken hands, and they're huge. Guys, do me a favor. Go to the Arcadia Grill. If you're a breakfast person, make sure you check them out on Saturday. And uh, let them know that Sam sent you from the Arcade to the Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue in downtown again. Uh, four more stories I want to get to real quick, including the dumb D of the day at the end. Um, and this is from the... InfoWars linked it. William, William Kennedy. Georgia bill would make federal gun laws nearly impossible to enforce. Georgia Representative Tom Kirby, another one for our good news of the day, and five co-sponsors have introduced the bill to block the implementation of federal gun control measures within the state. House Bill 732 prohibits all state public servants and gun dealers from enforcing federal gun laws. No public servant or dealer selling any firearm in the state shall enforce or attempt to enforce any federal act, law, statute, rule, or regulation relating to a firearm, firearm accessory, or ammunition that is sold, owned, or manufactured commercially or private in Georgia and that remains exclusively within the borders of this state. What did I have had this asked of me before? Sam, why would you need to shoot more than 10 bullets? Regular viewers know where I'm going with this. Just bear with me or skip ahead 10 seconds. Um, we have flash mobs. It's 10 or 15 people that go running into a store. They grab everything that they can take and they run out. Oftentimes they beat the hell out of anybody that's in their way, even if they're not uh, trying to stop them just because they happen to be standing there. Um, it takes any, 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 any light collapse to happen, a financial collapse, a problem with gasoline delivery, food stamp issues, uh, and nuclear problems of some issue that stop things in the, it would cause some kind of evacuation. Any of those instances could cause flash mobs in people's houses. Now, if you have 20 hoodlums running at your house, do you want 10 bullets, Barney Fife? No, I don't think so. Based on a principle with over 170 years of Supreme Court jurisprudence, HB 732 stands on strong legal grounds. Under the anti-commandeering doctrine, the federal government holds no power to require a state to help carry out federal acts or regulatory programs. As Georgetown law professor Randy Barnett recently told National Journal, state governments are free to refrain from cooperating with federal authorities if they choose. Also, the Supreme Court has upheld this doctrine repeatedly from 1842 to 2012. There is absolutely no serious discussion opposing anti-commandeering, said Mike Mahari. National Communications Director of the Tenth Amendment Center. Quote, on top of it, this is just what James Madison advised the people and states to do if they wanted to thwart federal acts. End quote. I told you we were going to have good news throughout the show in the last three or no exceptions. CNNMoney.com, Detroit bankruptcy judge blocks $165 million payment to fix. Basically, all the people in Detroit that were promised pensions or other kinds of assistance, and whether you're for it or against it, they were promised it. If you're promised something, then you do it. You sign the line. It's a contract. They kept their end of the deal. The banks wanted paid before the people did. No matter how bad the people got screwed and hosed, then this isn't going to happen, according to this judge. The judge in Detroit bankruptcy case struck down a controversial proposed settlement in which the city would have paid it to big banks $165 million. That's why it made the good news show. In 09, the city reached a deal with Bank of America and UBS promising the banks the future flow of casino tax money in return for the $300 million. Judge Stephen Rhodes ruled the deal likely would not be allowed to stand under the city's bankruptcy reorganization. He also rejected a proposed settlement that would have dissolved the original deal for $165 million. 
even though the bankruptcy court's mediator had recommended that Rhodes approve the settlement. So he still said no. Um, why, why do I think the people uh, shouldn't have to uh, do I, People already have given up. They've given up a lot. It's time for the banks to give up. And that's exactly what you're seeing. And I'm very happy that you see it. It says the decision is the right decision, said Mark Guy, as president of the Detroit Police Officers Association. It's an important victory. Spokespeople for Bank of America and UBS declined to comment on the decision. And of course, they're not very happy because they're not going to get the red people off. It says, um, it sounds like what the judge is saying is that you can put as much lipstick on a pig as you want, but it's still a pig, he's saying. So we said the banks and now have a couple of very unattractive alternatives open to them. They're left with taking a much smaller share of funds, like the people have already had to do, as an unsecured creditor or appealing at extraordinary cost and uncertain outcome, he said. Rhodes did allow the city to go ahead with a separate plan to borrow $120 million from Barclays to help fund the oper ongoing operations. Uh, basically, the banks made really, really bad decisions, and now they don't want to have to eat it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, let's face it, um, I went through a bankruptcy. I've never lied about that at all. But um, at the same time, I wasn't out buying big screen TVs. I was a cab driver, and then uh, the business in here in Canton, Ohio, anybody will tell you it fell out. I was in the middle of graduating. Student loans, this, that, the other, and I ended up broke. It wasn't like I was out buying million-dollar cameras, as you can tell by watching me. Uh, NBCnews.com, 2,000 mice dropped on while my parachute to kill snakes. It's kind of an old story, but I absolutely could not get rid of it because I thought it was great. There's so many, um, we need this pesticide, and that pesticide, this is great. They floated down from the sky Sunday, 2,000 mice wafting on tiny cardboard parachutes over Anderson Air Force Base in the U.S. territory of Guam. The rodent commandos didn't know they were on a mission to help eradicate the brown tree snake, an invasive species that has caused millions of dollars in wildlife and commercial losses since it arrived a few weeks ago. That's because they are dead, They're all pumped full of painkillers. The unlikely invasion was the fourth and biggest rodent air assault so far, part of an $8 million U.S. program approved in February to eradicate the snakes and save the exotic native birds that are their snack food. Every time there was a technique that is tested and shows promise, we jump on that bandwagon and promote it and help out and facilitate its implementation. Tino Guan, acting chief of the U.S. Agriculture Department of Wildlife Resources from Guam, told NBC, I don't know if that's good or not. It's not just the birds the government is trying to protect, it's also the money, of course it is. Anderson, like other large industrial complexes on the western Pacific, is regularly bedeviled by power failures caused when the snakes wiggle their ways into electric substations. An average of 80 a year costing as much as $4 million in annual repair costs and lost productivity, not to mention fried steak a la king. It says snake traps, sniffing dogs, and snake hunting inspectors have all helped to control the population, but the snakes have proved especially hardy and now infest the entire island. Guam is home to an estimated 2 million of the reptiles, which is some areas have a density of 13,000 per square mile more concentrated than even the Amazonian rainforest, says the government. But they are allergic to Tylenol. So basically, they poisoned the mice and fed them to the snakes. Uh, I told you, I knew what they Tylenol. It causes liver disease, ask the mice. But yeah, it's better than other solutions, I've heard. At least you're not poisoning the entire environment. Uh, this is from a rollcall.com. Last story I'm going to get to. It is the dumb of the day. I don't know if I'm going to keep the Dunce Cap of the Month award going. If you're listening to this and you really like the Dunce Cap of the Month, leave me a comment. Uh, if you can donate to the show, please do. Uh, the correct views of Hotmail.com. I say that because the Dunce Caps are very expensive to send. Also, there's too many dumbies in one month to possibly get to uh, in one show. So now I have, of course, the dumbie of the day. Uh, getting the dumbie of the day doesn't mean you're going to get a dunce cap mailed to you. I can't afford that. It just means that you are, in fact, dumb. 
Majority Whip Richard J. Durbin of Illinois and three of his Democratic colleagues are criticizing the Golden Globe Awards for showing celebrities using electronic cigarettes on TV. Unless you have a terrible heart condition or some extreme sensitivity to nicotine. The air on a California beach from Fukushima is a hundred times worse for you than cigarette smoke is. Um, that e-cig smoke is. I mean, and this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This is why they win the dumbie of the day. Uh, Durbin, along with Sherrod Brown of Ohio, who I know we like, but I'm sorry, you're dumb. Uh, Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut and Edward J. Markey of Massachusetts. Send a letter Tuesday, this is too stupid to even read, to NBC Universal and the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, expressing concern about the potential that showing these things at the awards show glamorizing smoking, even though, of course, it's not even really bad for you. The senators asked the two groups to take action to prevent similar appearances by e-cigs at future shows, and they list his Mamby Pamby Cry Baby letter. Let me tell you what. The GMOs that used to be in Cheerios are worse for you in one bowl than smoking a cigarette is for five minutes. You can take that to the bank. It's a correct views. Speaking of, this is the correct views. Thank you for listening, friends. Please go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time articles and videos and links on our Facebook pages. Uh, hit subscribe if you're watching this. Make sure you give me a like. It increases how many people see me on YouTube. Good night, friends. God bless, and thanks for watching.